So time now for the exchange. We want to talk about both the abortion debate in America and the state of the presidential race. Joining us is CNN political commentator Alice Stewart. She is also a Republican strategist. Uh, Alice, good to see you. So let's start in Florida, especially given that third measure where uh, essentially the court is putting abortion on the ballot. Uh, we saw what's happened uh, when courts have done that in the past, uh, specifically in Kansas, another red state, and uh, voters turned out um, and in loud majorities and said that they don't want the courts deciding what they will do in terms of a woman's rights to choose. I'm just curious to get you to respond to what someone like Christina Reynolds, an executive uh, for Emily's List, said in response to this. And she said, it had the potential to pull out more voters, and those voters are more likely to be with us than the other guys. Your thoughts? Yeah, Bianca, that's absolutely true. And look, as you mentioned, every time the issue of uh, abortion alone has been on a state ballot or a, a referendum or initiative, uh, it has gone in the way of the pro-abortion or the pro-choice crowd because this is a very galvanizing issue for them and, and protection for reproductive rights is very strong for them. And if it's a standalone issue, it generally goes in their favor. And let me just say this from, from many Republicans and those in the pro-life community, the uh, first ruling from the Florida Supreme Court uh, upholding the Florida ban. Uh, many in the pro-life community view that as a, a victory for uh, fetus, uh, fetal uh, babies that uh, can feel pain and have a heartbeat uh, and protecting and saving those lives. But the, uh, the order from the court to put this back on the ballot, that is a, a real political uh, battle for Republicans because they realize this is going to galvanize Republican voters and galvanize uh, even some Republicans and certainly independent voters who uh, want to protect pro, uh, the, the pro-choice issue. And look, Republicans are going to have to really work hard on uh, taking some of the focus in Florida off of the abortion issue and putting it on other issues uh, in Florida, like the economy and immigration and national security. And they're banking on what we're seeing in a lot of these state-by-state -state polls, that while abortion is a big issue and sometimes a single issue uh, for some voters, higher on the list are these uh, economic and pocketbook issues. So Republicans are going to have to realize, let's put the emphasis on that as opposed to uh, the abortion issue. But for Democrats, they're looking at this as really the, the winning issue, right? The issue that is going to get people who otherwise wouldn't ordinarily vote to come out and vote in November, hopefully, obviously, in their favor. Trump in the past has said that he isn't sure or he hasn't decided whether or not to support a national 15-week abortion ban. Obviously, he's going to continue to get asked about the six-week ban in Florida between now and November. He knows that this issue could cost him politically. I mean, where do you think he's going to go just in terms of how he's expected to respond to this do you expect him to continue to, to continue to be mute on this and not say anything what is the smart way strategically to handle this Look, I, I think you're, you're exactly right, Zane. He understands this is a political liability. On, on one hand, uh, former President Trump uh, pats himself on the back uh, with Republicans, uh, certainly in the primary, that he nominated three conservative justices that helped lead to uh, the Dobbs decision overturning uh, Roe v. Wade. And that is something that uh, many Republican voters uh, praise him for and say that that is uh, another reason for him to be reelected. But he also understands the, the flip side of that is, again, when this issue is on the ballot, uh, this really galvanizes and energizes those on the left. And again, also some Republicans, suburban women, and independent voters. And the fact that he has walked back his uh, previous steadfast support for bans uh, goes to show that he may uh, take a different tone. I, I think Nikki Haley, when she ran for president, the former South Carolina governor, she had a a, a more reasonable response on the abortion issue, saying that we need to pull back on conversations about abortion bans and let's talk about abortion limits. And there are uh, widespread support uh, against uh, late-term abortions, and that's something we can uh, certainly agree on. Let's talk about limits and not bans. She also said it's important to make sure there are exceptions for rape, incest, and life of the mother. And these are these are. Uh, aspects of the abortion issue that uh, Republicans and Democrats can agree on. That's where the conversation needs to go and less on outright bans on abortion.
I'll believe it when I see it, though, that the former right. president endorses Nikki Haley, specifically her policies. But you're right. I mean, she, she was the one who came out and laid out exactly where she stood on what issues instead of going back and forth and vacillating the way the former president has on the one hand, embracing that Roe was overturned because of him, but at the same time distancing himself from any rulings that are viewed as far too extreme. Uh, let me ask you, Alice, about how this impacts Florida, because there was a time when Florida Florida was seen as a potential uh, place where, where Democrats stood a chance, perhaps a purple state many years ago. That doesn't seem to be the trajectory or the case right now. But given the court's ruling, uh, the Biden campaign's own spokespeople say that this uh, perhaps is an opening for them, um, that Florida can now be in play. What are you hearing from Republicans? Are they worried? Uh, they're they're certainly concerned, and they're certainly not taking this for granted. And and also hearing, uh, as we've heard from the Biden campaign and the Democratic National Committee, they're putting untold millions of dollars into the state of Florida and on this issue alone. And they realize that there is a large return on the investment for uh, campaigning on this issue. But what. Uh, Donald Trump and Republicans have in their favor going into this election is the key issues that galvanize voters. Again, as we've talked about, uh, the economy, inflation, immigration, and national security. These are important issues for the state of Florida. Not to mention the fact that Joe Biden, President Biden, is losing a tremendous amount of support from Hispanics and African Americans. There's a large Hispanic community in Florida. They are frustrated with the policies of the Biden administration, uh, not the least of which uh, is on immigration. So uh, Republicans are banking on the fact that uh, the low approval rating for President Biden, the fact that he's losing amongst the key voting uh, electorate in Florida and the economy not doing as well as they say, Republicans are banking on those to help uh, push Donald Trump across the finish line. Alice Stewart, appreciate the time today. Thank you. Thank Alice. you. Thank you.